1970s television series Wonder Woman is one of the most fondly remembered shows of its era. But there are still some fascinating facts about the show that many fans don't know about. For example, not every fan realizes that the iconic animated titles we see at the start of the early episodes are not the versions that originally aired. The pilot episode featured a slightly tweaked version of that animated sequence with changes including the lasso panel originally having been a bullets and bracelets fight. When the show was syndicated, the modified cartoon was retrofitted to the pilot episode and has never appeared on any subsequent streaming or home media releases. Diana's explosive spin transformations are an iconic part of the Wonder Woman television show, but early episodes actually featured a slow dissolve rather than a flash. For these sequences, the camera needed to be fixed in one place, then Linda Carter would spin as one identity to film one half of the sequence, then have her hair, wardrobe, and makeup redone before filming the other half. The fact that this sequence required a costume change creates significant and costly delays in production. Adding a magical flash to mask the joins meant that the two bits of film no longer needed to line up as closely, so they no longer needed to be shot back to back. Although Linda Carter did do a handful of her own stunts on the show, it was G. Epper who did most of the stunt work. Epper once alleged that while Linda had five Wonder Woman costumes, Epper herself had to make do with just one. Starting with episode 2 entitled Fausta, the Nazi Wonder Woman, Epper had to have transparent straps added to her costume after vaulting over a fence caused Wonder Woman to suffer what could only be described as a wardrobe malfunction. Jeannie Epper wasn't the only stunt woman on the show. Legendary daredevil Kitty O'Neil was the show's high dive expert, while stunt motorcyclist Debbie Evans also lent her skills to the series. Much of the show was filmed at Warner Brothers Burbank Studios, including its outdoor streets and woodland sets. If some locations look familiar, that's because the same studio was used to film the 1960s Batman series, as well as the first season of 2015's Supergirl. Because Wonder Woman was an all-union show, the non-speaking background characters are all paid extras, never members of the public. The season 3 Comic-Con themed episode Spaced Out does feature some genuine fan-made costumes outfits, but all worn by paid extras. Also, the convention hall is, in reality, a Warner Brothers soundstage. Despite strong ratings, ABC scheduled the first season of Wonder Woman sporadically, with gaps between episode air dates shown on different days of the week. The second and third episodes were screened as filler when similar show The Bionic Woman was suspended to let star Lindsay Wagner recover from a car accident. Warner Brothers pulled the show from ABC, giving the second season to rival CBS. The new network gave the show a steady time slot, 8 p.m. on Fridays. By the third season, however, the adult audience had largely drifted away. But CBS did not initially cancel the series. At the time, Starlog Magazine reported that Wonder Woman was on hiatus while the network focused on sitcom offerings. Sadly, as sitcoms started to dominate the 1980s TV ratings, CBS never bothered to take Wonder Woman out of hibernation by greenlighting a fourth season, so the show was effectively cancelled. However, it left behind three seasons, almost 60 episodes, and is still very much appreciated with a cult following by fans today, decades later. <laughs>